Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, the Word of God, Minister Joseph reminds us the hidden power in the Word of God. Over this year, I really wanted to preach about three things. And God, by, by God's grace, I've been able to preach. This is the last part of this. I wanted to preach about the blood of Jesus. I wanted to preach about the name of Jesus. And now, the Lord has given me another privilege to preach about the word of God. I'm preaching about the word of God. I'm preaching about this. I'm preaching about the Bible. The word of God. The word of God is very powerful. It carries life. Today I just want to take some few scriptures from the Bible. And we talk about this word of God. And how can the word of God be applied in your life to see results. Because most people read the word, but they don't see the results of reading the word. If you read the word of God, if you spend time in the word of God, it has to show results in your life. Because this word is living. The word of God is living. So if you spend enough time in the word of God, your life needs to start transforming. Because the word of God is living and active. That's what the Bible says in the book of Hebrew. The word of God is living and active. So it's living and active. And today I want to start from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And I will read. The Bible says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For the struggle is not against the flesh and the blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the power of this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of the evil comes, you may, not be, able, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, you stand. I'll continue reading. Say, stand, stand firm that then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the bracelet of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. So faith is a shield with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation. Everyone is saved here. So you have the helmet of salvation and you have the shield of faith. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. So the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And when we started reading, saying, we, we are wrestling against rulers and principalities. So if you are fighting against rulers and principality, and you don't have the sword, you will not win the war. Am I right? You will not win the war. And for you to win the war, you need the sword. You may have the helmet, that's salvation. You have the shield, that's faith. But if you lack the sword, you lose the war. And the sword is the word of God. Jesus, the enemy comes to Jesus, the devil, and he's trying Jesus. Jesus responds by the word of God. He says, Satan, it is written. It is written. He uses the sword, the word of God. Satan, it is written in the word. Yeah. Sometimes when things come in your way, when the enemy tries to challenge you, you have to have Enough word in your spirit to quote to the devil. Devil, it is written. It is written. It is written. By stripes, I am healed. It is written. But until you get that word in your mind, in your spirit, that's when it will start working for you. The word of God is a sword. You cannot go to war without a sword. You lose. You lose. So we need the word of God for us to win this war. Because we are wrestling every day against principalities. We are wrestling against things we cannot even see. But when you have the word of God, you are sure you will win. Because you have 
the sword. And the sword is the word of God. You need the shield, that's faith. You need the helmet of salvation. Once you are saved, you have the helmet of salvation. Your head is protected. But for you to attack, you need a sword. For you to attack the enemy, you need the sword. You need to know the word. You need to stand by the word. You need the sword. And that's the word of God. Another thing about the word of God, it's a foundation that can build our lives. The word of God is enough to build our lives. Let's read in the book of 2 Timothy 3.6. The Bible says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. This word, the word of God, is enough for teaching. If you, are, you have kids, this word is enough for teaching them, rebuking them, and correcting them. This one can be a foundation to your life. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 19, the word of God is a lamp to my feet and the light to my path. It will show you the way. It's enough to have a strong foundation in your life just by the word of God. It's good for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training for righteousness. The Bible says, I have hidden, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin. It's enough to prevent you from sinning. It's enough to break addiction in your life. Just hide this word in your heart. Just take the word and hide it in your heart. It's enough. Because it's enough to build a foundation in your life, a strong foundation. Parents, when you're raising your kids, raise, raise them in the ways of the Lord and they will not depart. When he's saying like this, raise them with the word of God in their life. Even when they go astray, they have the word inside them. Amen. Hide. If you hide this word in your heart, you'll overcome so many things. It's enough. It's enough to build your foundation in anything. Any question you have in life, anything you're facing, just take this word and read it. It has all the answers you're looking for in this life. The word of God. It's powerful, very powerful. And the moment you realize this, you start reading this word with another perspective. You're knowing I'm not reading any other book. I'm reading the word of God, which is powerful. It can transform your life. This word can transform your life. This word has never failed. It will never fail. If you apply it in your life, it has never failed. If you take your time, if you take your time and read it, meditate this word, it has never failed. It can produce results at the first application. Just read the word and let it flow in your spirit. It's enough to build a foundation in your life. The word of God is God. When you're talking about the Bible, the word of God, this is God. Let's read the book of John 1.1. 1, 1. It's a common verse. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning, there was the word. And the word was with God. And that word was God himself. This word is God. The man, who, the man who wrote the Bible, they were inspired by God. It didn't did just come from their heads, no, no, their experiences, no. They were inspired by God. So this is God's word. When you're reading this, this is God. It's very special. The word of God, it's God by itself. In the beginning, there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. This word is God. You treat it very special. You know, this is God. The word of God is God. And the word of God is life. This is life. 
The Bible says in the book of Matthew, Jesus answered, it is written, men shall not live, men shall not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. They shall not live by bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. The, la- the word of God is life. It brings life into our life. It brings life to our circumstance. It brings life to our family. The word of God is life. Yeah. And when you realize this, you start thinking things differently. Because this is life. When things are dying, you have the word of God. Yeah. When your business is dying, you have life. You speak life. You speak the word of God in that marriage that looks like it's going to break. You speak life because it's the word of God. In that sickness, you speak life because the word of God is life. When you have this word, things should not die. You just speak the word of God because you're speaking life. The word of God is life. And it works. It works. The word of God is life. And you know, Many Christians, unfortunately many, may die without reading the whole Bible. I don't want you to feel guilty. But sometimes it's not about reading the whole Bible. You can read the whole Bible and your life remains the same. But one man can take a single scripture, just a single verse, and that verse changes his life. A single word from God can transform your life. You can read this Bible for the whole time. The whole, cover to cover. People who do divinity, they read it cover to cover. And some of them, their life don't change. But a single man can take just a single verse. And that verse transforms his life. Because when that verse sinks in you, it becomes life. It becomes life. The word of God is life. So whatever is dying in your life, just speak the word of God to it. Just say it is written. Speak life. And it will respond to the word of God. Because the word of God is life. The word of God is above every other God's title. On Sunday, I speak about the name of Jesus. But there is something That's above the name of Jesus. That's the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, 138 verse 2 says, I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name. For you are loving and kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your names. Above all your names. All the names that you know, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, all these names, Jehovah Gabor, a man of war, all these names that we know, Jesus, this one, that's above all those names, and that's the word of God. So this word is above the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, I'm standing, I'm ready to back up my word. If you read the Bible in the book of Jeremiah 1, chapter 1, and verse, I believe it's 12. The Lord said, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Bible is saying, I'm ready to perform my word. I'm standing watching at my word. I'm ready to perform my word. God is very serious with his word. He's ready to perform his word. There is no word of God that comes out of his mouth, goes void. He can't He can't allow. He's so very, very focused and determined about his word. He's saying, I'm standing. I'm ready to perform my word. So if you take the word and you believe it in your heart, God is ready to perform his word because his word is above his titles. Because his word, his, his reputation. So he's ready to perform his word. And as I come to my conclusion, the word of God will stand forever. Yeah. This word will stand forever. Yeah. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, 35, the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, 
but my word will never pass away. Heaven and earth will come and pass, but the word of God will never, ever pass away. This word is here forever and ever. Ages to come, ages and ages, years and years to come. This word remains powerful. This word remains powerful. This word will still produce results. 2050, 2060, this word will still produce results. You can read so many books, they will not transform your life. You can read motivation books, they are fine. But this word has power, this word has life. It will stand ages to ages. Through trials, trials, and trials, this word will still produce results. It's a matter of applying this word in your life. It's ready to produce results in your life. And maybe you're asking yourself, how will this word produce results in my life? I read the Bible every day. I wake up, I read the Bible, but I don't see results. How will this word produce results in my life? How? Let me answer that question. The Bible says in the book of Joshua 1.8, the Bible says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So for this word to produce results, keep it on your lips. Meditate it day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it, then you will be prosperous and successful. So that you may be prosperous and successful. So for you to be prosperous and successful, this book of the law, keep it in your lips. Meditate it day and night. Let it sink in your spirit. Let it sink in your spirit. When you say, and my God shall provide all that I need, it's inside your spirit. You're not just saying by your mouth, it's coming from somewhere deep. You have meditated day and night. But if you read the Bible casually, you'll never see the results of it. But if you take a scripture and meditate the scripture day and night, you don't have to take 10 scriptures. Just start with one. One scripture. Meditate it in the morning. At lunchtime, meditate it. In the evening, meditate the scripture. You'll see the results. You'll see the results. Just take the scripture, meditate it. If you're having financial problems, just take the scripture. Meditate that scripture and my God shall supply everything that I need according to his riches and glory. If you're sick, take, take a scripture, meditate the scripture, morning, lunch, evening. By stripes I am healed. Meditate that scripture, let it sink in your spirit. And when it sinks in your spirit, you start seeing results. Because when it sinks in your spirit, it provokes your spirit to do something that's different. Meditate. Let this word never depart from your lips. Let it be so close in your lips. When bad news come, you have something in your lips, the word of God to respond. When you, have, when you receive a bad message from the doctor. You have the word of God to respond fast. When you're faced by difficulties, you have the word of God in your lips to respond. Not to respond with other things. You have the word in you to respond. The way Jesus was tempted by the, by the enemy, he had the word to respond immediately. Have the word in your lips. Meditate this word day and night. Let it sink in your spirit. When things come, you have the word to respond to every circumstance. And when you get to that point, things start working. Chains start breaking. Curses start breaking in your family. Addictions start breaking. The Bible says, if I'm born of God, I'm a new creature. So if you have any addiction, you meditate this word and you say, I'm a new creature, the addiction will go. 
It's a matter of spending quality time in the word of God, meditate it day and night, and let the word stay in your lips. Yeah. As I finish, the Bible says in the book of Acts 19.20, and the word of God prevails. This word will prevail forever. It will prevail over your circumstance. It will prevail over everything in your life. The word of God. As we leave this place today, go and meditate the word of God. Yeah. Let it stay in your lips. Let it be the first thing when you're responding to things. Respond by the word. Don't respond by your logic. Don't respond by the way you feel. Don't respond by the situation you are in. Respond by the word of God. Yeah. And when you do that, Things start changing. Yeah. Bible says, I sent my word to heal their diseases. He sent his word to heal their diseases. So the, the healing is here. He's already sent to you. Just meditate the word. And you see the results in your life. Those who are watching us online and you're not saved, God is ready to save you. He died for you. He says, in the beginning, there was a word, and the word was God, and the word was God, and, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He came on earth to die for you so that you may not live and die in sin. So if you're watching me right now, I'm ready to pray for you. God is ready to save you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying, my, I'm praying for our viewers today, Lord. Those who are not saved, Lord, we speak salvation in their life, in their spirits, in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, Lord, we declare, Lord, you have sent your word to heal their sickness, Lord. And Father, today we send the same word to heal every sickness, to heal every marriage, to heal every circumstance in the name of Jesus. We are sending the word today, the word of God that's powerful, active. We send the word to every situation, every circumstance, Lord. We send the word today to perform in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.